Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast with Benji Nyson. This extra show is supported by Lacole in wearing their casual wear, which quite comfortable actually. So they produce performance cycling apparel. Today we're talking about Patrick Lefebvre and Sam Bennett. This beef is spiraling almost out of control in the media. All one-way traffic from Patrick Lefebvre's side has come out like every second day because Lefebvre keeps talking to the press. So when did this first start getting weird, Benji, because we obviously covered the emergency announcement of Cav being included in the De Koenig squad last week. Yes, indeed. And it actually started with a different selection. We had the Blois of Belgium tour about two weeks ago, and Sam Bennett was supposed to be the sprinter for De Koenig quick step there in that massive field of top sprinters. And about two days before the race, he apparently hit his handlebars with his knee, and as a consequence, had a knee injury. And... The day itself, he arrived in the Balwaza Belgium tour, according to Lefebvre, and he was sent home and replaced by Cavendish due to this injury, as they weren't properly aware of this, apparently. And from that point onwards, we had the amazing time of Cavendish winning a stage in Balwaza Belgium tour. But in the meanwhile, we had so much communication in the background about Lefebvre and Sam Bennett in regards to this injury, for example. And I think it started off with Lefebvre saying that it's not exactly sure if he has that knee injury and that he thinks it's more of fear of failure or something towards the Tour de France. Yeah, he has his article or his column that he writes weekly in Head Nervesblad, uh, Patrick Lefebvre, and he was saying that basically Bennett went back to Monaco where he lives and he was being treated by, uh, to quote Lefebvre, a guru, Chris Froome's regular physio. So, I mean, not sure how good he is at the moment. And (laughs) apparently... To Koenig riders have to just use, they can't work with outside medical people without the team's consent. So that's a problem for Bennett. And obviously, they've got the uh, infamous Eve Van Mol as the Ivan Van Mol as a doctor at the Koenig Quick Step who has a lot of experience, according to Lefebvre, with knee injuries. And he thinks, and apparently Van Mol thinks, you know, the knee is not as bad as Bennett thinks. But, but there's a Cycling Weekly article where it seems like. There's just been a communication problem with Lefebvre and Bennett. or They've crossed wires somewhere where Lefebvre thought Bennett was going to call him earlier and he didn't, and maybe that is on Bennett. But, yeah, it seems to be a problem with that. But every time Lefebvre has come out, and this is well, a day ago, he's called Bennett mentally weak. He's saying, I'm the boss, so <laughs> you should, you know, you should show me respect and call me. He's saying if he goes back to Bora Hansgrohe, then it says a lot about who Sam Bennett is. He's saying if he doesn't behave himself, then he'll have three months less riding, no Vuelta, and 50% less salary. Uh, He's saying that what Bennett did was disrespecting Lefebvre and Cavendish because it sort of meant Cavendish was, is he in the team or not in the team? And from my perspective, I've been trying to think, oh, is there some sort of like angle here for Lefebvre? But to me, this just seems like he's just out of control and taking it really personally, whatever's happened with Bennett, because Bennett's not going to re-sign with the Koenig Quickstep, surely. I mean, I'd be very surprised if, if he did. Yeah, I, certainly. I certainly wouldn't. So if you're Lefebvre and he's not re-signing and he already said ages ago he's asking for too much money, then why would you care if other teams pay too much money for Bennett? Isn't that hurting them if, they're, if you think they're overpaying? So he, he just seems to be intentionally destroying Bennett's trade value or market value, and that seems just like, It's very personal. And if I was Bennett's agent, I'd probably be, it's at the point now where you'd be trying to take legal action and it's borderline defamatory what Lefebvre is saying about Sam Bennett, basically saying that he's lying about a knee injury, et cetera. So yeah, what's your take on it? Is Is there any way that Lefebvre doesn't look like a dick in this scenario? I think there's multiple levels to this. First of all, you got the level of, let's see from Lefebvre's standpoint, yeah, you've got a rider that is going to a, a third-party doctor, which is not really a thing to do in a cycling team. You don't really do that, at least from my knowledge. And as a consequence, I do see that as something that is pretty uh, not not very clever if you know that that is the way to go. But that is completely different and separate from the fact that he's indeed just basically destroying the reputation of Sam Bennett in the media here. And he's not doing it lightly. He's genuinely saying stuff like, uh, if you fight like a devil and cry like a child because Bora Hansgrohe treats you wrong, and then after nearly 14 months you sign with the team again, it says more about him than it does about me. I have balls, he doesn't. Quotes like that is just like, yeah, that's that's just stupid. And 
it's not the first time we had the same exact story about Almeida just before the Giro, where he was basically talking about Almeida's age and then ripping on Almeida's age and then saying that, yeah, saying bad things about that age. And then as a consequence that Almeida will probably not be staying at the team because of this. And yeah, it just wasn't very nice. And I think he's got a history now of just blatantly disrespecting the riders that are under his control, that are working for his team. And I think that an issue like this, the second that an issue like this occurs with a rider that is not signing for the next season, his go-to move seems to be, yeah, sure, let's put it in the media and try and disrespect this rider or try and put pressure on this rider through the media. And that's not an ethical way to do a business and that's not an ethical way to be a team manager. And I don't enjoy seeing that because I can just imagine if I'm working at uh, a regular job and the boss suddenly says, uh, this guy, uh, he's, he's looking at he's looking at a podcast a bit too much, a lantern recycling podcast a bit too much in his hours. He's listening to that a bit too much. Let me call like national news and just blatantly <laughs> tell everybody in the nation that this guy doesn't work properly. <laughs> exactly. It's not, it's, it's not even like, imagine the, you know, how embarrassing it would be if your boss did a um, reply all or at all the whole firm or company that you worked at roasting you, right? Yeah. That's not even this because that would be internal still. Yeah. He's literally going to the media. Imagine if you're a lawyer and someone goes to like, I don't know, the law, whatever legal body there is, if there's a forum or something and just pans you to the forum and then you never get hired again or you're never going to get a good job again. And it just seems quick steps structure, Benji, seems to me for sprinters, you come in, you don't get paid a big headline-based salary, but they can guarantee you results because of the lead out and the structure and maybe you get decent bonuses as well. And then you move on afterwards and then you get paid a big base. Case in point, Elio Viviani was on like, is he on like 2 million euro or something? Yep. Outrageous. A lot of money. That doesn't work if you shit on the riders before they leave. And <laughs> because if I was an agent, there's no way I would sign, have, I'd, I'd tell the rider, be very careful signing with De Koenig unless you're a Belgian star. Um, and if you were going to sign there, you'd probably want a little bit of a premium. So it seems almost counterproductive for Lefebvre in terms of the, the way he wants to run the team. And yeah, like I just, if I was an agent, I'd be like, don't, don't sign for that person because if you do anything wrong, and yes, say Bennett, okay, he's gone against the letter of his contract. That doctor didn't rule him out specifically. We've never seen that. Bennett was just like, oh, I got a bit of knee pain and then, I don't know, it seemed to, it, it's unclear who took the final decision on Bennett going or not. But even if Bennett has done that, you don't need to go this far in the media. So it'd be, yeah, like if I was Almeida, I'd be pretty annoyed or his agent. And I guess, yeah, if you were a prospective writer, Benji, <laughs> would, this, would this actually matter to, to you or, or do you think, oh, no, nah, this it's just a one-off occurrence? Yeah, I think that this would worry me, certainly. And I think that... It happened more than once now to other riders as well. And I think that if I'm out of contract next year and uh, I'm going to get worried, I'm going to get worried that by the time we reach a certain race that I might be the one that he chose under the bus and stuff like that. So it's it's just a toxic work behavior, I feel like. And I hope that it's better than how it's displayed in the media because right now it blatantly looks like there's a boss that is shitting on his employee because he's not perhaps going at the best of his abilities to try and achieve being at the Tour de France. And we don't know that because we don't know if his injury is real. We don't know if that's not real. And so we can't explain that aspect to it, but it just looks like that to me at least. Where would you, we've already discussed this a couple of times, I think, but now where would you go if you were Sam Bennett slash which team would you want to sign him? If I'm Sam Bennett, I would not sign at Quickstep. I wouldn't sign up for a hands grower either. Israel Startup Nation for me seems like the prime candidate. The Ineos rumor doesn't make sense to me, but if I was him, I'd be like, Greipel's aging out badly. Well, not badly. Uh, Greipel's just, Bennett's better than Greipel, I'll take. Um, so he could take over. Some of those lead out guys like Zabel's getting very experienced, et cetera. It is their startup nation. They got money to burn. So you can get the combo of you. It's plausible that you can get results at Israel. You're a big enough name that they will make you their guy, surely, at large races. But maybe, you know, like, I don't think the Froome being the man is possible at the tour next year. 
And so you can get a lead out there and also like, yeah, they can pay the big bucks. But do you see any other natural landing spots or issues with the Israel system? I think the Israel team is basically the best one financially as well for him, perhaps. Because if you're looking at teams that could use someone like him, then I would say that EF doesn't really have a top sprinter, but they don't have the finances, in my opinion, to Uh, get a sprinter like Bennett in the team. Then my question arises with, okay, Astana's running empty. What are they going to do? An Irish sprinter? I'm not sure that fits in their in their live goals there, but there's space and money there after this season. So that's possible. But would I want to sign there as Bennett? I think that it would probably be a pretty fun experiment. But the problem is that you don't know what's going to be in that team next year with so many riders leaving. So that's also a dangerous one to choose. And we're thinking about Bora. Well, his beef with Bora two years ago doesn't exactly shine me uh, as the perfect place to go. And then you've and got what just Ineos. happened with Ackerman. And yeah. like, that didn't look good either. Yeah, exactly. Then Ineos, for example, uh, he was rumored to be in contact with that as well. And I think that we've seen so far that in- Ineos doesn't really care too much about their sprinters, but perhaps they're willing to change that if they got someone like Bennett in their team, which I doubt because they're going to go to the Tour de France with their Tour de France leaders and they won't have a train for him there. So all these aspects do play a role. And it's not easy to see a team where he would really fit. And Bahrain, they've got the legend himself, Heinrich Hauser, mate. <laughs> exactly. They're, oh no, but he's uh, jokes aside. Hausler's been he's a good leader, yeah. man. Hausler, Milan, Moric, uh, Bauhaus. But yeah, that's more sprinter, right? Or do you yeah. see him as a lead out role, perhaps? No, I just I just see Bauhaus as moving. I think he's a second tier sprinter that's never going to win consistent Grand Tour stages, like multiple ones in a year. And if Bahrain, he's out of contract at the end of, the end of this year and I would swap him out for Bennett if I was Bahrain. And yeah, I think I think that he'd have no competition in terms of sprinters there. And then Bahrain would, you take Bennett to the Tour, to say, Sonny Cobrelli, you're going to the Giro, not the Tour, because <laughs> the parkour suits you more. And I think yeah. that, that would work quite naturally. And then there's less pressure, like, hey, crashes out yesterday. I don't see Colbrelli winning too many sprints. So yeah, I think I think that would work as well at Bahrain. I'm just what I look for is where there's a pre existing half a lead out train, some yeah. success with the lead outs, and maybe a sprinter moving on. As Benji said, EF they're never doing the lead outs, although they've got Bissiger, I guess. So Bora They're not the have money it. just in general. I think yeah. that they could do a good lead out like at EF if they have a sprinter to True. work for. They could probably set something up with the riders they have, but they don't have a sprinter to work for. And as a consequence, yeah, they need one. And financially, I just don't see Sam Bennett happening there because after the Koenig quick step with such success in the Tour de France of 2020, you'd want to be paid decently. That's my guess, at least. And that's a problem with the Koenig. He wants to be paid decently. And that's why he's not at the team next year. Well, next to that, I just wouldn't join anymore, even if it was for bloody $7 billion. With no, that 7 billion. toxic environment. 7 billion, you'd swallow your pride. Come on. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Bike exchange as well. They've got some second tier sprinters in Groves who maybe might improve, and uh, Luca Mesh gets, and also like Matthews, more a reduced bunch guy. So possible there, but I wouldn't see it uh, either. So, yeah, it's tough to find a good landing space for him uh, as well. So, yeah, you There's so team- many sprinters available as well. Like, yeah. So it's difficult for teams to choose between certain sprinters. You've indeed got an Ackermann that is leaning more towards UAE, according to the rumors and so forth. You've got Sagan leaving, which is leaning more towards the Total, for example. And I think that needs a loss out of contract, but I'm not certain about that one. There's just so many sprinters left and right that are running out of a contract. And I think it's going to be very intriguing to see where they go at the end of the season. Perhaps someone like RKS Sanzi wants to make a big splash again. Uh, but they've got – who have they got? Buani on the books. He is out of contract at the end of this year. Perhaps they – when's Nairo? Because Nairo is their big salary. He's Yeah, he's got another year, so maybe not then. But, yeah, interesting to watch. Let us know your thoughts down below on the Lefebvre Bennett beef. Hopefully, we don't hear too much more about it. And uh, hopefully, Sam Bennett, we see him at the Welter cleaning up some sprints. But until then, ciao.